Hi, I'm the long-haired version of Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. We've recently shown you how to do a Moxon vise for the end of a table saw. Now we're going to do a clamp on one that acts as an auxiliary on your bench. Great way to increase your capacity for clamping. You're going to love this. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Big, first big advantage you're gonna notice is a typical workbench, you want it to be relatively low, so when you're planing, you're over top of the plane. When you're sawing, however, it's nice to be up a little bit higher. Well, that either means, means raising your bench or just sucking it up and bending over, which isn't great if you get a lot of dovetails. By adding this Moxon vise on here that just clamps in place, you're now sawing about four or five inches, maybe even six inches higher than you would otherwise. And it's a really comfortable position. I also like it for things like sharpening a saw because I can put my saw vise in here and it clamps across its whole width instead of a typical uh, end vise like we have over here that only clamps a portion of it. Now I actually experimented. This one is made out of just some construction lumber, but I like the size, I like the dimension, so we're actually gonna go through and build one today and show you all the ins and outs of it. We're using the Moxon hardware from Woodcraft that we've cosmonized, and when we're actually putting it together, we'll show you what we've done to make it a little more user-friendly. But if you're looking for a solution to support your workpiece, you don't have any obstructions underneath. And that's probably one of the uh, really big advantages. When you put your piece down there, there are, no, uh, there are no guide rails. I think this is the best commercially available vice there is. It's made by Schoberg, but even still, you always have those rails in the way. So if you're clamping or you're trying to cut a board that's this wide, only part of it is gonna be supported by the vise. The idea All right, let, I'm going to take down some of the dimensions. Now the nice thing or the, the, about this is that you can make this vise as wide as you need. If you're doing a lot of carcass work where you need 24 inches, you can easily modify it to that amount. This one I'm using has, it's gonna give you 16 and three quarter inch clearance in between. So we essentially need to come up with two pieces of solid wood and they're going to be 22 inches long each. So we need, actually that's not true, one piece, 22 inches. And this height, this is going to be by two and seven eighths. And the thickness, I'm gonna keep it as thick as I can. I think the material I have, I might be able to get a full two inches. And then the jaw is going to be the same length. So that's going to be 22 inches. However, I want, some more depth here, a little more holding power. That's gonna be five and a quarter. And I want that to be as thick as possible as well. And you'll see why when we start drilling the underside. Now, just a couple of features about this. This is piece is attached to a piece of three quarter Baltic birch. May as well get that dimension over here as well. So that's going to be 26 by five and a half. I'll show you what we did here. Um, because this piece is not as long, we use the edge of the bench to coincide with this jaw, so you got lots of clamping power. So when this is closed up, You, I actually made, I didn't give enough clearance, I didn't have thick enough material, but when that closes up, I would just put this tight against the edge of my bench, which would make this flush with the face of the, vi the bench and put your clamps on and away you go. This piece is going to be glued and screwed to this piece. And with the exception of drilling some holes, it's a pretty easy procedure, but when you're done, you've got a great mox and vise. So I'm going to use, I was, spent some time thinking about this I thought, does it need to be built out of maple? The only downside to working maple is the cost and the weight. And if you're lifting this up from underneath your bench a lot, no, you don't need to have the extra weight if, you don't, if it's not justified. This is simply a piece of construction lumber and that actually is stiff enough that I think it's fine. 
but I've got some nice thick pine that I'm going to use. We'll try it and see how it works. You may want to go to something like poplar, but we're going to use northern white pine on this one. I'll go ahead and I'll mill out these dimensions. And then uh, once they're square, we'll come back and we'll talk about where to put some of, the, uh, some of the bevels just to soften the edges a little bit and maybe even add a little bit to the appearance. Okay, so there's my three pieces. And I managed to get just about right on two inches, which is good. So I'm going to start with a piece of plywood. This is a piece of three-quarter Baltic birch. If you're not sure what that is, it's uh, instead of having an inexpensive filler, it's the same material, just obviously the grain direction is running a different way. So it's a superior plywood. I like the fact, I had experimented with this, I like the fact that there's a bit of a bevel on there. I just like the way that it meets on the table, keeps from having that hard edge along the top side. So I'm going to go ahead, and I think I, that was 30 degrees. So I'm going to put a 30 degree bevel on both ends and also on the back side. That'll take care of that piece. Now, this piece, so of course it's not going to be as wide as uh, the one I had in here, but I glued two pieces together. But I'm going to put a bevel on the back side of that as well. And I think that was 20 degrees. So we'll come in here and I think I think I'll come in just a little bit. So somewhere right about there, we'll add a 30 degree bevel to that. And that'll, uh, with the exception of planing everything up nice and neat, that'll be the only thing we do to that piece besides drilling the holes. And then on this one, we want to have a bevel on the front. When you're doing half blind dovetails, it caused you to be down in there like that. So I'm actually going to increase this bevel. This was 20. I'm going to go with a 30 degree bevel on here as well. And I'm going to take it right from right from there, so 30 degrees. And then just to make it look a little neater, we'll cut, uh, I'll leave a little bit of a flat spot, maybe right about to there, we'll cut a 30 degree bevel on both of those ends. Leave the bottom as is. Of course, we'll clean everything up with the hand plane to make it nice and neat. At that point- I'm gonna change this bevel on the back piece. I'm gonna do a 20 degree bevel there doesn't need to be 30. There really isn't any clearance. I'm just going to do it just because I think it looks a little neater. Before I finish playing these pieces, I'll go through and do the drilling. That way all the machining is done. You don't have to worry about getting more marks on it. Uh, next uh, issue is where do we drill the holes? So you want to kind of have the rods pulling somewhere around through the center. Um, got to be high enough that we are able to get the nut on the back. So it's got to be high enough, on, high enough up on this back piece. And I, so I think if we put it in the right spot back here, it'll end up being in the right spot out here in the front. And I will actually use one as a guide to drill the other so that they line up perfectly. So we'll take this one. Now, I'm going to use the same parts off of this. So I'll take this apart. I'll use the washer as the guide to determine where to drill the hole. So here's what the Cosmonized Mox and Vice kit contains. You two wheels, two knobs, and they spin freely, two screws, two springs to help that jaw come back, two nuts, two wash, actually four nuts, four, four washers, the two smaller ones. So we're going to use the smaller ones over here. Now we want to make sure that this washer doesn't hang over, you don't want it hanging over the side of your bevel. So we need to keep it, yeah, I'd say in about there, that'll give us our maximum amount. So if we center it on two inches, we'll be okay. So we can actually come over here and mark two inches. This is the washer that's going to be in the back side, so we want to make sure that we have clearance there. So if we put that right there and just move it up a little bit, I'll draw a circle there, and we can do the same thing down on this end. Get our two inch mark. Center it, just 
just a little bit of extra. Now I'll go ahead and I'm going to drill these two first, the three quarter. We don't do anything else to them. So we'll line up these top edges and on the end as well. Now I took that same three quarter bit, put it in uh, my drill. I just want to go down in there and just start the little pilot hole at the, well, it's the centering point. Now our first, I'm going to build, drill the deepest, the widest hole first, then move it down to the successively smaller ones. Now on this one, actually it's sitting over there, I drilled a fairly large diameter hole. We've got to capture the rod and the spring. Actually the nut's going to be on there first. And I wanted enough wiggle room so that that doesn't have to actually be perfectly parallel the whole time. It can actually move a little bit. So I think if we go oh, maybe inch and a half to start with and we'll go down enough so that we can actually capture that nut and allow that spring. That spring will compress. Actually, I'd best do it now first to find out how much depth we have to have. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Okay, so if we wind that down, small as it goes, so we need to have the first hole in here has to be enough to capture. That marks an inch and a half. I'm gonna go just a little bit more than that so that doesn't have to be quite so compressed. So let's say we go an inch and five eighths. So we wanna drill a hole that captures the nut first and that's almost the same size, so I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the same diameter hole to catch all of this. So we need to go an inch and five eighths in depth. And if we go corner to corner on that, we need at least an inch and a quarter. I'm going to go a little bigger. I'm going to go an inch and three eighths. So it would be an inch and three eighths diameter, inch and five eighths deep. That's just a little bit too snug, and you want that, as I said, you want it to be such that when you're winding it in, it doesn't jam if it, unless if it isn't perfectly parallel to that piece. So I'm gonna take my rasp, and I'm just gonna go in there and open that hole a little bit. It usually only takes a couple of minutes. There you go. That'll allow. Now I just gotta do it for the other side. Now before we assemble, we want to finish this, meaning get rid of all the mill marks. I suppose if you had to, you could sand it, but watch my 32 seconds to sharp. We'll leave a link below and you find out how, if you don't already know, how efficient and fast a hand plane can do the job. Not to mention the superior finish you get.
Now, when you do the end grain, you need to come in and cut a little chamfer first, and that'll prevent tearing out the back side. You just have to keep your eye on it to make sure you don't go past it. Okay, glue this in place. So find the center mark, half of 22 is 11. And the center mark on this one. Half of 25 is 12 and a half. And we'll have to carry that up to the top. Now I'm going to glue this in place using the bench as a call on the bottom. Set that like that. Now with this being beveled, I'm hoping that these clamps with that uh, pad on there will be enough to hold it. And then once the glue is set, we'll come in and we'll screw it to reinforce it. I'm going to set that back a little bit. I'm going to put one or two clamps on that little flat that hopefully will hold it in place. I want that to be flush, so I'm going to just use my body weight until that sets up a little bit. Hopefully it'll keep it from creeping. I can use my thumbs to feel when that's flush. Okay, I'm going to use eight two inch by eight, number eight screws and uh, mostly just as a little extra. Uh, I'll put one in back as well. Then we'll throw one in the middle. Now, I want to flush this up. It's pretty close, but I want to avoid leaving any marks in timber that you have in your vise. So, actually, you know what? The, uh, this board is sticking out beyond this one just a little bit, which is, is okay. So I'm not going to bother with that at all. Now, we just put our rods in and try this out. Now this is actually a nice snug fit because um, th it doesn't provide any slop at all. A little easier if you put one nut against the other.
take this one and put it up tight on the inside. Really no reason to have a washer there. Probably don't even need one back here, but put it in anyway. Just snug that up. Now we'll put our springs on. Put our jaw in place. Big washers go here to keep that from wearing. It also helps to spread the pressure of the hand wheel a little bit. With this tight, that'll make sure that the face of your bench is flush with the inside. Inside jaw, that is. Now what I do is just bring this down so you're approximate. Put that in place. And that's pine, and that's plenty of clamping pressure. There's no, there's no slop there at all. Now you can line the inside with cork if you want. That's what we've done in some of our vices, which just provides you with a little better grip, but really that's almost all you would need. Now I notice when I put this together, we got something off because that's not perfectly flush. So I'm just gonna grab my plane and even that up. It'll take a little bit off of this and a little bit off of that, so. Okay, if I wanted to, we'd come in and take a little bit off that bevel, but that's just fine the way it is. Well, there you go. A real easy Mox and Vice. Gives you great capacity. We actually ended up with almost 17 inches. Great clamping pressure. When you don't need it, two clamps and it's underneath your bench. Good luck with this. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.